Oh. That's super loud, please don't do that. <laughs> that was way too loud. It's a a a a a a whatever it is. A RSVP. It's an RSVP. Hello, Technology. everybody. Thank you check, for joining check us. Check the meters. What? Yes, the meters were <laughs> through the ceiling when he was doing that. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us on yet another present day production live stream. It's been two weeks because two we whole weeks because I was off gallivanting around London last week. You gallivanter, naughty gallivanter, naughty. If you've never seen this before and you don't know who this gallivanter is, my name is James and I am the professional techie wizardy person. I couldn't think of what the word was. The resident tech wizard. Yeah, that's the one, the resident tech wizard. There you go. And my name's Mark and I'm a fat, grumpy mastering engineer. Mm-hmm. Ho, ho, ho. And my name's Sam and I am, I've got a list of things that I am here. A fashion icon. <laughs> no. Uh, a plumber. I'm, and I'm a, a songwriter, producer, composer, consumer. <laughs> Yeah, that's me. Jack of all trades, my friend. Oh, I'm done. I'm done. I play some instruments to varying degrees of success. Oboe. Nope. Pink. And and <laughs> I knew you were going to go there. Okay. Oh, sad. <laughs> So what are we talking about today? First of all, we are talking about the fact that Mikhail Moskowski has already left us a super chat. Thank you what? very much, Mikhail. That's We've incredibly kind. We've only been on started. stream for 1 minute 33 seconds. So and <clears throat> I've sorted your drums out. Hey. Just, a, just a bit of a tweak to go with the bass. Um, so I'll get that back to you tomorrow, probably. There we go. There well, we let's go. just read out Mikhail's message quickly. Yes. I just wanted to thank you guys for the help and for the feedback on my band's track. Looking forward to this live stream, though I'm on stereo as I can't afford going Atmos for my own project. Yes, you can. you got a pair of headphones. There we go. So we're going to be talking about quite a few things today, aren't we? We are. Thank you, Mikhail, for the super chat, yes, by the way. Thank That's you very much. Very, very kind of you indeed. You're very a wonderful, generous. wonderful person. <clears throat> we love you. We do. Woo. Uh, so the first thing on our list is Sam has been gallivanting himself, hasn't he? Around he London, he has been gallivanting. What is that the word of the day? It is the I word. Just imagine of the day. myself trotting around London, trotting around with hooves. <laughs> well, I, I, I did do that sort of. I, I walked out of St John's Wood and walked the wrong way. Oh, that's no my, good. Because my gut was saying, "Yeah, it's this way. It's this way. It's definitely this way." <laughs> do you know what I used wasn't. to really enjoy back and in the at a map. <laughs> In the 90s, I sort of lived around that way, sort of West Londonish, and I used to really enjoy just driving down Abbey Road <clears> on a Saturday and just watching hordes of Japanese tourists taking photos of themselves on the wrong crossing. Oh, yeah. There were some on the wrong crossing um, <laughs> yeah, on, on Monday. Yeah, it's, yeah. like, it's the one outside the well, studio. I got some photos of it. I'll, I'll oh, send yeah. them to you. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I used to love funny. that. It used to make me chuckle. Ha-ha. <laughs> 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 uh, uh-huh. Yes. So tell us about it. Tell us what you've been doing. Sam. Yeah, what Where have you been? been? What have I been doing? Yes. Well, I went to Abbey Road. Oh, Scabby Road. That's to it. the studios or the, just the road? The, the, to just the as ever crossing. <laughs> to, 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 to studios. Yeah, to what, the studio. What are you doing there? Um, well, I mean, I only found out you wanted to talk about this this afternoon. So. <laughs> yeah, well, I thought, you know, Sam since Abbey Road's fairly interesting for an audio it's production so, live stream. So much has happened since Monday. It feels like a month has I know, passed. it's crazy, isn't it? Um, so I was like, oh, dear God, what happened when I was there? Um, but yeah, I, I attended a session at Abbey Road. Um, hopefully it's okay to say that I was invited by Andrew, who is the founder and chairman of Audio Network, a wonderful company. Um, not quite sure what I can or can't say about the session because, like I said, I only just found out you wanted to talk about it. <laughs> um, but it was amazing. It was a great space to be in. We were in Studio One. The big one. Very cool. The big one with all the uh, laundry on the ceiling. Yeah, the old pants uh, from the wall. You know, I didn't notice that. Panty hose. I, you, you I always look at that and go, <laughs> what is that doing? So uh, we haven't, I don't know if you, you probably see it on the thumbnail, but um, there's just like wafer thin bits of fabric hanging up on the ceiling and it just looks like slightly post-war washing doesn't it yeah <laughs> really? yeah it's like, well like i said i didn't notice it when i was in there because I, I was I, I don't tend too to busy stand working do, do that yeah i do yeah. i always go for the ceiling first it's like oh is that to avoid the eye contact of everyone yeah that's it level? yeah pretty much <laughs> oh yeah. i might try that in future yeah. go, look up there yes yeah, yeah. and that smell isn't me <laughs> it, take, it takes his mind off the fact that he's normally not wearing clothes yeah that's, that's why anyway so but you've yeah, been I, doing mystery things well i i so, so we went to School Farm, didn't we, recently, and recorded there. Um, we did. And I just said to Andrew, oh, it'd be great to, you know, come and see some <clears throat> sessions, you know, orchestral stuff, because I haven't really got much experience with that. And, uh, and he kindly invited me along to Abbey Road. Good night. Which was amazing. Incredible. So, yeah, I got, I got to experience the whole process. He's a wonderful music producer. Mm. Like, he's just, like, got this air of... Um, calm authority in a very pleasant way yeah. you know like 
it just really nice it, e- mm-hmm. even when there's a suggestion of something else to do to the musicians it, it's done in such a way that it just makes you go oh yeah i'd love to do that you know um <laughs> so it's, it was just a really wonderful experience and there was um so it was ben foster who was um co-composer and he was conducting the orchestra <coughs> and a young composer called samuel reed who was super talented and they'd written some stuff together um and yeah what would you like to know mark uh what can you give us the channel order on the, on the desk yeah so we we had uh we had so, and the first snare. channel was kick snare <laughs> then it, <laughs> no. so i mean what was really interesting about the day was that yes recording an orchestra but it was split into two halves i i would assume f- for ease of use of stems right so for example the first session which was 11 till 2 was with the strings uh full string orchestra you know you loads of double basses cellos um everything you get in strings basically yeah, um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and that was a you know a three hour session that was just amazingly well kept in terms of timing mm. everything was got through just in perfect order mm. um and then the second session was brass but the brass obviously sat where they would sit in the orchestra right um, and like I said, my assumption is that's to do with stems. So yeah. you've you've got the two in isolation. So if you want to use certain parts of the composition, you know, you might just want to use the brass. So you might want to get rid of the brass and just use the strings. Yeah, you can do that. Um, Clever. Yeah. So mm. Pretty cool. So you've been to see the sites this week, haven't you? You've yes. Seen the recording sites, which yeah. are Did you exciting. Go to the cafe? Yeah, I went to the cafe. It's quite in, it's quite interesting because you you walk around and there's these signs up that say uh, no, no photographs. Uh, and I'm thinking, oh, is that, is that just in case I accidentally pap a beetle? Yeah, you know, something yeah. like that. Just, yeah, just... I can, and they're really military about they it are. as well. I mean, I've been, I've been really, really severely reprimanded for taking photos in a corridor. Hmm. And it's I'm just taking some photos of some of the posters you've got in the wall. It's like, no! And yeah, and you have to delete them off your phone in front oh, really? of someone. Really? Yeah, like military. Ah, see, I, I, I didn't. I didn't want to test the waters with, with any of that. I, I just I was just glad for the experience. But uh, it, was, it was quite funny because I, I got there and I was a little bit sort of, I think it was the first time I've been on the train for about five years. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so I, I got there and I was given instructions as to where to go. And it was like, oh, yeah, if you go downstairs past the cafe, uh, past the mail toilets, and you'll, uh, you'll get to Studio One. <laughs> So I heard that. So if you go upstairs Uh-oh. and pass the <laughs> So you ended up in the rat's nest of... <laughs> so I ended up talking to, um, I don't know, some, someone who was doing, they were doing a little bit of building work at the top. I was like, yeah, mate, you're in the wrong place. You want to go downstairs? <laughs> on... Oh, yeah, he did say down, didn't he? Yeah, oh, yeah silly, down. Mate. Is it? Can I take a photo? Yeah. I, I didn't say that, no. <laughs> yeah, but if um, you went upstairs, did you see all the sort of um, just massive vintage tape machines and yes, EMI consoles yes. that are just sitting there yeah, in the corridors. Yeah, they strewn and, along the corridor. Yeah. Mm. And, I, and I bumped into a whirly at one point that, oh. that wasn't there right. earlier in the day. <laughs> As I, I went out to the toilet, there, there's a whirly there, like perfect mint condition. Mm. I was like, oh, that must be being moved yeah. to get to go somewhere else because uh, we couldn't get in Studio 2 because uh, some other people were in there um, who we Fair then enough. saw later on in the bar. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the, the cafe, the bar... It, it's one of those it's, studios. It's a cafe bar. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those studios where everywhere you turn, there's either someone famous or something famous in terms of kit or whatever. You know, I remember we when we were there, we went into one of the store cupboards and there was like just endless amounts. Of yeah, stuff. and that was it's the only like, one oh to show us the cupboard. They locked Ringo in because that's one of the, exactly. One yeah, of the, it's like, yeah. No, it's, but there's like, there's Behringer stuff in there as well. It's like what? Yeah, the world's <laughs> biggest. Yeah. yeah, there's everything. Yeah, there. it's quite amazing. And I, I think when they wasn't it EMI Studios when, when yeah. the Beatles sort of started recording mm. there. So why did it change its name to Abbey Road? Do you know? Uh, well, it was EMI Studio. I think originally it was EMI in the twenties when it first opened, okay. um, and then went through the through the thing. I think it's when they, when EMI sold it or whatever they did okay. with it, then it became um, mm. Abbey Road. But if you look at the old photos, it does say EMI Studios on the yeah. on the top. It's, it's super modern in there, thing. and um, you know, Andrew was kind enough to say to me, "I'll go in there and stand behind the conductor and have a listen." Mm. What yeah. an experience. Wow. Like, uh, and the, the thing that really got me, there's like, I <laughs> had a little bit of a debate with John Barrett, the engineer, and I was like, yeah, it sounded about 2.5 second tail on the reverb of the room. I was like, no, it's 2.3. <laughs> I was like, okay, I stand corrected. Okay. I, was like, I was sort of standing there going, 
<laughs> no, I wasn't. Um, so there, there's some questions in the comments saying, like, why can't you take photos in Abbey Road? Like, I don't seems know. completely unintuitive, doesn't yeah, it? If you've got this amazing studio... I mean, you if, want... you've, if you've booked a studio and you're in there and you're sure, working, Sure, I can understand can, that. But in the public areas... Yeah. Um, but, but the only it's... logical explanation is because there's so many... There's a who's who of people exactly. walking around all the time. Yeah, yeah but if your so, photos don't contain any of those people... It's just, I, yeah, well, I, I, I remember hearing the, the theory once that it was because they do tours every now and then, like paid tours. They're essentially giving away the goods if they... Let you take photos. How but... many photos of there of Abbey Road on yeah. online? I don't know. I it's... don't. Um, Not a lot. No. Not a I mean, we could take photos in when we were in Studio Two. Cause yeah, we, we got the pictures of the control room, the, the, the live room, the whole lot kind of stuff. But yeah, in the corridors, it's it's like no, thou shalt shall not take photographs. Yes, the corridor, what, the though, interesting bit. The room in Studio One is an instrument in and of itself. Mm. That mm. that is the sound. Yeah. You know. Mm. D- yeah. I can't imagine ever walking away from doing a session there and going, mm, yeah, I'm just going to um, add, <laughs> just a, add, bit add of this. a verb suite onto this. Yeah. <laughs> just to strike it sound better. <laughs> but, as a, but as an actual space, it's quite underwhelming when you first walk in because it's just like a warehouse. Yeah. It, and you, yes. You sort of first Blue walk in warehouse. and it's like, oh, uh, oh, this is, oh, shit, this is Studio One. But it doesn't sound it's, like a warehouse. No, it doesn't sound, well, it kind of does a little bit, but it's the knickers hanging on the ceiling. That's what, that's yeah. what, that's what gives it the magic. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, it, it was a great experience just to see how they would work on an orchestral session. Mm. Mm. And, you know, you got three hours. Yeah. That's it. That's pretty tight. So you're working with an orchestra. Everything has to be right in that score. Mm-hmm. You know, th- there's no time for re-edits or you can't just go, oh, could you just, you know, add this here or that? You know, the guys who composed those pieces that we were listening to and recording on that session... They had dotted every T and put a love heart over every I. <laughs> you know, it, it was it was pretty astounding, and it and it was great as well. Like just hearing that kind of music, and th- there was this one point where um, it, this this piece of music had a beautiful ending, and I was like, "That's so nice." And I looked at the score, and I went, "G in the bass, D, G, D, G." I was, that's a fifth. That's just a fifth. <laughs> it was. It's a <laughs> power it chord. It was just like uh, all the harmonic information was being filled in by the harmonics of the room and everything else. Yeah. And it, and it was it was just it was a real education. Just like keep it simple. Mm. You know, you you can get so much emotional information from simplicity. You know, it, it was a wonderful experience. Did you find the engineers terrifyingly efficient? Because I've, I've only ever sat in on one orchestral session, and that was at air. And they, they're talking another language. I hadn't got a clue what anyone was talking about at all. And they were so absolutely on it. Mm-hmm. If there was a mic went wrong, which there was, that yeah. was changed in like two seconds. Well, it's just like um, Stefan at, uh, at school Yeah, farm. you can like tell he came super, from Abbey Road, just super, super efficient. efficient. Absolutely knows what he's doing, completely in control of everything, can solve any problem like that. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, it, it's quite a different experience to go into like a rock session or something like that. Um, hmm. Yeah, which, I, I, th- which, I think it'd be very interesting to see a, a rock or a, a pop influence genre session there, um, hmm. because um, I mean, you essentially had two engineers. You had a Pro Tools engineer um, who was called Marta. I think she was incredibly fast. It was like, oh, hmm. you know, there, there was one point you just wanted to listen back and go to a previous take and just check something. It was like, you know, done it's straight there. away. Yeah. Um, and then John Barrett was just on the desk. Yeah. So, and they were dovetailing between each other, you know, there was like a synchronicity between them. And then there was an, another guy in there, I forget his name, um, who could have jumped on it any minute yeah. as well. You know, so it was a well-oiled machine. Yeah. It was really... Yeah, yeah. It's, it's good. It's great to, to watch something like that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, like I say, lots of interesting people around in Abbey Road. Um, it's a great place to be just for, you know, to meet people who are doing other interesting things. Mm. Food was really good. Yeah, someone actually just commented, how was the catering? Amazing. Spill the beans. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean, would you like to know what I ate? Yeah, what did you Yes, have? we would. Uh, an abundance of green beans, actually. Oh. <laughs> 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 Not very classy. <laughs> um, and uh, I think, so I had chicken, and then for the vegans, there was celeriac. 
Ah. Which looked like a piece of chicken, but was not a piece of that chicken. That sounds like yeah. a disease. Yeah, I was, gonna, I was got, just going to say that. I've got terrible celeriac well, in I, my I leg. said exactly the same yes. thing. I said, what is this celeriac you're eating? <laughs> Sorry, you're suffering. <laughs> <laughs> yes, did they die recently? But, but it, it looked rather tasty. Mm. Um, but yeah, yeah, the ca- catering was good. Um, yeah, the, the pipes were clean um, for the pints, which is great, you know, no chemical That's aftertaste. So. Wait, they got a pub in there? Well, they, they, they've got... You know, pulley things, pulley 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 things. You know, I didn't know that. Very cool. Known as a bar, you might. I don't know if you've ever been to one. You're a bit too young. Yes, I think a Bartholomew. Yeah, that's (laughs) on. But yeah, so so, I mean, the the lesson in it is be prepared. Mm. Oh yes, (laughs) you're going to show off something like that. Get get your shit together with your scoring and everything else, and just Mm. make sure that there aren't any mistakes. I guess go over it again and again, which is kind of similar to you know what I do with string sessions and stuff because it, it's all the same, isn't it? You know whether you're working with a quartet, uh, it's like the, the the string players union is is basically that you know bows down after three hours. Yeah. That's it. So you, and it's true. Yeah, I, I remember when um, when he did um, we did I did some sessions for my album, um, and you'd have you know your track list. But you'd have to go through it and figure out, well, which one's going to take the longest, which one's going to take the most time, which one's going to be the easiest one to get through. And I remember we got to like 10 to 7 on the session day. And I was like, oh, we're going to make this. Aren't we? Don't <laughs> worry, guys. You've just nailed some really hard stuff. This is all semi-briefs. And we were done in, in the time it took to press record and go through the song once. It was done. Really? But but the thing is, is that like everything ha- has to be, you know, mm. notated correctly. But you're talking accents, you're talking, you know, like articulations, everything just needs to be spot on because those guys, they come in and they get it done. Yeah. And you've only got the time that you've got. And it makes sense. Yeah. You know, because I mean, string playing, I mean, guitarists in particular will know your fingers get tired Mm. after a while. Um, and that's what you're paying for as well. You're paying for people that will be able to just read it. It will come in and and do it and do a good job. And yeah, that's it. So you're paying a higher price Mm, um, to get what you pay for. Yeah, you get what you pay for. Exactly. Remember when we were at Real, uh, Real World and we were talking to Ollie mm. about they had a string section in that week and they had an, ex- an inexperienced, it was for a pop record, they had an inexperienced producer. So he hadn't worked with a string section before. Right. Um, and they had a string quartet and he asked if they could do an overdub oh, because he uh-oh. wanted it to sound like an eight piece <laughs> string session. And they, abs- and they said, yes, we can do that, but it will cost you. 150 percent more so if you know if we're a thousand pounds for us to do that it's going to cost you two and a half thousand pounds because what you should have done was you should have booked an eight-piece string section Mm. if you want an eight-piece arrangement and so we'll do it but it will cost you half as much again as if you booked an eight piece and it was just like yeah but that's mindset as well isn't it because Um, the, the mindset is if you know if you want eight strings, you should record eight strings yeah. because part of the beauty of recording strings is that they're all in a room together, mm. you know, and there's all this sort of sonic information that happens that's yeah. not just the one string on and the it's something you can't emulate in kind of virtual instruments yeah. and that kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's things you can get away with. I know a lot of um, sort of more budget TV work that's done with sample libraries, mm. they might hire one or two string players and, and sort and of overdub realism. that onto the samples to add a bit of, yeah. of, of something different. To it, but it's still not the same <clears throat> as having that performance in a room. Mm. Yeah, um, and, and it's it, different every time. I mean, I, I listen to a lot of film score stuff, and I'm quite often going back through different versions of it. And I've got a favourite version that you know this one recorded at Berlin Philharmonic is better than this one, and yeah, because even though it's the same score, it's a completely different mm. experience. Well, I mean, I remember time. when uh, Lord of the Rings came out, right, mm. and. Uh, and seeing that in the cinema and be like, wow, this looks so cool. And then watching it back, um, albeit only very briefly, because I thought it was a bit of a snooze fest personally. <laughs> but um, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, here comes the hate. Uh, <laughs> but um, oh, don't get me started on The Hobbit. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we sing another song? Um, but um, <laughs> you. But anyway, my point being is you go back and look at the CGI there, in hindsight... And all of a sudden, it looks really dated. Yeah. Mm. You know, same as if you watch the original Star Wars, that kind of thing. <coughs> if you go yeah. and record real instruments, it will not date. Mm. It will sound just as good in 20 years' time, 30 years. Before. Whereas if you use samples, what might sound great now, I guarantee you, oh, yeah. you will start to hear yeah. that yeah. it's a sample. 
Um, and that's been Andrew's philosophy with Audio Network as well. They've always recorded as pure and as um, you know, real as they can. So if they want a Bolivian folk band, they'll go to Bolivia hmm. and hire a folk band. Get it straight um, from the source. Yeah, which is a great way to do it. And that's one of the reasons why they've been so successful. I think, like you say, it doesn't date um, and it's got that organic feeling to it, which is quite mm. good. And yeah, Lord of the Rings was really boring. I went to see this. <laughs> I went to see Howard Shaw conduct the. I can't remember which one of the London orchestras. One of them at the Albert Hall. Dad, did you ask him? Go. Are you sure? <laughs> yeah. And he went no. And um, yeah, that was quite boring. Yeah. Mm. It was. Um, it was it makes you when you see the when you hear the score without the film. It's kind of like. Well, it's interesting some of the stuff that goes on in Abbey Road as well because you can hire it for parties, can't you? You can hire it for events. Yeah, they do a lot of events there. there. Yeah. Nat Denchfield has just commented saying, I once worked at Abbey Road. Uh, Studio 1 and 2 were booked out for a birthday party, like a 60th, for two days. Imagine wow. the cost. Oh, wow. I can imagine that would not be cheap. Nope. Plus you got all your events, host like kit and all that kind of stuff. Uh, and Nat also said, I got to wander around Studio 2 alone, unchecked at 4am in the control room. I was too worried about being told off that I didn't take any photos. Wish I had. Ah, now damn. I now have more knowledge about gear. The control yeah, room, you should have done. The control room's disappointingly small as well, isn't it, in Studio 2? I think it's smaller you're, than this room. You're, yeah, you're kind of like, oh. Yeah. The, oh. Knee, the, the, the big knee sort of wall to wall. Yes. Um, and, I, yeah, I mean, I didn't so. get to go in there, but um, Studio One's awesome because yeah. you've got like, the server room just behind. So I got there a little bit early mm. um, and the record light was on. And then every time I go to open the door, it would go back on. So I was like, oh, I don't, don't want to kind of. <laughs> and, and the guy at reception had said to me, oh, it doesn't matter. You probably just go in because you're not going to disrupt the session. Yeah. Um, and there's like a server room behind. So there's like a control room to the control room. Yeah. So I actually just crept in there and just watched. And it, it was amazing just being able to, because they, they have speakers in there right. as well. So you could hear everything that was going on in terms of what the talkback would be. You could hear Andrew and Samuel, the composer, yeah. um, co-composer, talking to the players um, and, and just having... And then you can see through the glass yeah. into the control room and then through the glass into the live room. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. like being at a really fucking cool zoo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you know what I mean? It was just like like the best zoo ever. You know? <laughs> like, that that was really interesting, and I, I'm glad that I actually went in there and didn't go into the control room to start with because, yeah. You know, but everyone there was a really like genuinely nice person, mm, good, and and not in a in or not in an inauthentic way. Yeah, you know, it was just like we're really happy to be here. Well, and it, it makes sense. You're in Abbey Road. You you work think, it on. I think not very li- nice people don't last very long. In that yeah. kind of, they do tend to in pop and rock a bit more, but they don't last very long in a situation like that. Yeah, at all. You've got a uh, well, it's like School Farm. We, you know, we effectively had to go for an interview to, to make sure <laughs> that we were up to the standard um, of of not being a knob to, to to go and use it. And that's great. That's that's a really good philosophy mm. as well. I think. Is that, is that how did you get in? I don't know. Um, I didn't go to that one. Oh. I snuck, James snuck me in in a flight case. Oh, okay. for the, uh, well, fr- print style. Print style. Yeah. For the, for the How did Prince get in here? Yeah, flight case. Yeah, uh, he smells a bit now, doesn't he? That's, that's another Chupo story. Card Company said, "At the party, did they sing Happy Birthday to you?" Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That one. No, no. Um, so yeah, it sounds like a very interesting experience. And I'm yeah, kind we of should jealous. Try, we should to be try fair. And do some content or something from there. At mm. some well, point. if we're allowed to film. Uh, yeah. No, I think we should. We should do. We should book something one day yeah and have and invite some of you lot Ooh. to come down well we've always and, discussed something like that haven't we watch other abbey road like or real happen. world or somewhere big mm. like that would be good that would be good fun we'll work on that and we can record a cover of the birdie song uh, played entirely on siamese bum flute and triangle <laughs> And then, when we've finished recording the Siamese bum flute birdie song, we can then mix it. How <laughs> yeah. exciting. Which oh, yeah. takes us on to the in, next in Atmos. chapter. What's the next chapter? Before we come to the next chapter, there was a question which came on quickly saying, uh, what are the speakers behind Mark? Uh, they are unannounced oh, new shit. things. Those. Before we went on this live stream, I was like, should I take them down behind the desk so no one sees them? And we was like, nah, no one will see those. We'll just leave them. No one will see them. And then there's been various questions saying, what are those? Um, they are not mum sixes on their sides, and they're not mum eights. They are they're not something at- else. Yeah, they're, they're not, not mums. They're not mums at all. 
They are. Um, they, they, they look like they're in the wild. They're aunties. They're, they're what? <laughs> Behind your little uh, <laughs> yeah. bum tickler plants. They're what yes. we should have designed when we were designing ourselves an Atmos speaker. Yes. Um, but it kind of went mm. bigger and very yes. stereo, didn't it? Which so, is good because now we've got those around the room in there and it sounds amazing. But um, basically, we're trying to come up with a smaller, slimmer, and it's slim, it's four inches, 100 mil deep, um, cheaper. Atmos solution, something that would perfectly team up with Audience Aurea, mm. no doubt. So yes, it is a surroundy boy. Um, and it sounds pretty good, doesn't it? It does sound pretty good, and we'll tell you all about it when I've made when it sound ready. super good. Yeah. Because at the moment, I, I only did one, so we only built the prototype cabinets of those like two days ago, and I only did one iteration of the DSP, so currently it's very early stages, um, just kind of getting everything roughly in the right place yeah, um sounds, and sounds promising so far but yes it does sound promising it's very different from the mums very different components blah 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 in terms of drivers but yeah you'll find out all about those very soon yeah, when we can not, share if we can't or it, it, yeah if it sounds like we can't absolute make it work rubbish forever or, then you'll never find out about them because at the moment they come out about the same price as the mum six which is a bit, bit less s- yeah but not enough less hmm. um so that's a bit silly really because the mum six does sound better but hmm. Um, yeah, we'll see. Early days. Well spotted. Yes. Whatever that was. Well, I those. think the Mum 6s only sound better at the moment because they've had months of development work put into them, whereas they've had three hours. Yeah. So, and the, yeah, so that's yeah, probably that's why. Reasons, yeah. Anyway, watch this space. Anyway, we'll yes, you'll we'll find out about those very soon. So, what's talking of the surroundy, agenda? swirly, soundy things, swirly, swirly what's next things. on the agenda is the new services Ooh. yes sam is pointing excitedly at what it says on his sheet well, I've, I've 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 not even read this yet so oh it's all a surprise for sam <laughs> um, um so yeah the new thing is ha, ha, ha. atmos mixing so we if you haven't been in the loop recently within the last week or so we finished our atmos room next door Wait. um so we've now got mums absolutely everywhere we spent a lot of time pulling the ceiling apart and putting things on the ceiling and all that. So we've got mum sixes on the ceiling, and we've had a, a lot of software <laughs> issues. We to have contend then, with. If yes. someone two years ago, when we started on this Atmos journey, if someone had told me that designing and building our own speakers would be the bloody easy bit, mm. I wouldn't have believed them. But it, I think it genuinely has been. The rest of it, there been, have been a lot of frustrations uh, with tech. Total our sake. Yes, <laughs> like. Unbelievable. Oh, my God. But we're there. Nearly. Now. Nearly. <laughs> yeah. Styring, ironing pretty, out a few bits. Pretty much. Um, but, yeah, like Atmos mixing is... It's been exciting with us experimenting with it over the last few weeks, hasn't it? Now yeah, we've well, got I've, the full I've, system set up. I've been sort of staying here, so I've been in speaker production mode during the day. Um, we've got Nige now coming in and helping with that as well. He's pretty much trained up on everything, so he's doing a load of that, which mm. takes that pressure mm. off my shoulders which is good um but i've just been going in every evening and just doing a mix a day um a lot of it from well all of it from stuff that we've recorded and and mixed in stereo over the years um and there's a lot of stuff there. how many tracks do you reckon we've recorded and mixed since your tenure? i mean on that so we've got two six terabyte hard drives ooh, in there ooh, both ooh. are full i want to guess and we've just audio so there's got to be i don't know you guess I'm going to guess 2,000. It's pretty much 2,000. It is a lot of artists. It's a lot of stuff. Yeah. A lot of tracks. So I've been picking and choosing, oh, that would be good in Atmos, or that probably wouldn't be good in Atmos, so let's try it and see if we can make it so it is good in Atmos. So the only the only genre we haven't really got is any dancey stuff, because we've always, yeah. ha- we've always been recording real coming musicians in with instruments. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm going to I'm gonna make some of that myself oh, to, God. to play around with. Spicy. That's God gonna help us. I'm going to do an I Can't Stop remix. Um, no, I'm not. I think, I think we've got enough of them, to be honest. I and there's some probably, really yeah. good yeah. dancing ones. Yeah, there, so. we, need to, we, we will come back to that at some well, point in the future. Well, I think we, there are still a couple of people who are working on their mixes as well. So we'll give right. them a chance to... Give them a chance to catch up yeah. um, cool. as well. And also give us a break. Yeah. Yeah, I was asked the other day, actually, and I also got a message this afternoon saying, when are you doing another one of those episodes? We will do it soon because yeah, we, we have will, received we some more remixes. Bring ourselves to listen to it again. But, it's probably yes, as there. you can imagine, we've heard that song a lots, lot lots, of times. I mean, times. I only listen to it about 10 times a day now. Yeah. Just down, down on from the 100. Yeah, Perfetic. I listen to it a couple of times on the way in and a couple of times on the way home, so I'm just down to the car. Do, listens. You, do you actually? Or you no, just, no, I do. He listens yeah. to it in the shower okay. and yeah. everything. 
I, I, I do feel like it, it is the perfect accompaniment to a lot of things, as in I can't stop. What is it you're doing that you can't Driving stop? Driving to work because exactly. I'm not there yet. Yeah, yeah. I that. can't stop going mental. Yeah, yeah, I can't stop having a poo. Yes. Oh, and really? there's a... That, that's something you might want to have looked at if you just can't stop. <laughs> just can't. There'll be Once nothing it, left of you. Once mm. it starts, that's it. Yes. Um, and Shaw Raymond has just commented, hello, Shaw, saying, hello, uh, Shaw. I can send you some dancey stuff if you want to mess about. That yes, would be please. very cool. That'd be great. We Thank would me. absolutely love that because Shaw makes really cool kind of disco-y stuff and yeah. I, I assume some other genres as well. Um, so I am very, yeah, very yeah. interested you know, I, to I see. I would really like to know how many people that make dance music or music to dance to that sure. actually dance. <laughs> I'd, yeah. I'd imagine a well, I really small I'd amount. I'd like to see a Venn diagram of that. <laughs> yeah. I'll yeah, draw you I one up. It's a tiny, tiny, <laughs> tiny, tiny amount. Anyway. Send us a video of your moves, sure. Yeah, just, oh, yes. Just, just, just your moves. Yeah, we'll only mix the thing if there's a dancing video accompanying it. Okay. That, that's that the uh, prerequisite that for any Atmos enough. mixes. So anyway, to cut a long story short, um, I'm in love with Atmos so much now uh, mm. I'm not doing any more stereo work. Stereo, as far as I'm concerned, is dead and it can disappear. So stereo, so so a, a, a few people as well have noticed that the mastering stuff has disappeared off the website as well mm. for the last couple of months or few weeks or yes. or so, and that's because we're basically sort of resetting everything we do. So stereo mastering at the moment I'm going to continue to do um, – and the rates are going up, but for our valued audience, they'll stay the same. And there's lots of people like Peter Brandt and hmm. um, Matt and all kinds of people. You know who you are. We'll be sending you a, a, a thingy that you can type in the hmm. checkout box. Um, and obviously, I've got a lot of label stuff still coming in as well. So stereo mastering will continue to be a thing, but I am hoping to phase that out as well over hmm. over the next few years. In terms of stereo mixing... I'm just not going to do it anymore because it's things have moved on, I feel. And this is the first time I – we had an inkling when we first started dabbling with the Atmos thing. Um, but it's moving on in lots of other directions, not just me sitting in a room with some really nice calibrated speakers and some acoustic treatment. What are you laughing at? <laughs> There's a comment that's just – Nat Densfield said you you could get the strong chin guy to send the multi tracks from that disclosure remix. He means Alex. Oh, yeah, I I was trying to think what his thing was. It was like strong jaw or something like that. What was I think it was jawline. Yeah, yeah. jawline. Uh, strong right chin now, guy. Strong, strong chin. chin guy. Sorry, Alex, but that's going to stay forever now. <laughs> strong chin in the diary. Yes. Anyway, sorry. Um, I get distracted rather easily. <laughs> yeah. What so, were you saying? So I haven't <laughs> been. So I've. So what I've been doing with new stuff and new stuff that we've produced, and as well as stuff that gets sent in, um, is whereas most people have been starting off with the stereo mix, and you do the stereo mix, and then it gets stemmed out, and you do the Atmos mix. I've been doing it completely the other way around, and I've been doing the Atmos mix first. Mm. and then doing the stereo mix. And in every case, I've struggled to get the stereo mix to sound anywhere near as good as the Atmos mix. And there's one reason for that and one reason alone, and it's because it's fucking stereo and it's just crap now. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Mark's it's completely just, sold it's, on it. <laughs> it's such, having to shoehorn everything into two speakers is such a ridiculous way. There's no grey area to mix you, music. Is there? There, there is no it's, grey no, area. It's, it's like, like in, it's in, dead to me. It is. It's. I've been burning vinyl. No. Oh, <laughs> Christ, that is. Oh. Yeah. That's it. so. I just I'm just not going to do it anymore. So, so so and there's been a few people that have sent me some multi tracks and said, "Can you can you mix this for me?" And I've just turned around and said, "No, I can't." If you want an Atmos mix, yes, I can, and then we can derive a stereo mix from that, and we can master it in the traditional way and stuff like that. But if you don't want an Atmos mix, just go and get someone else to do it. It's as simple I'll do it. as because <laughs> yeah, because I just don't want to do it anymore because it's really really boring. There's some great music in stereo. There is. That I still enjoy listening to. Yeah, but... The, but Come on, we get hung up a little bit too much sometimes on the difference between stereo and Atmos. At the end of the day, if it's a good piece of music... That's all that matters. That's all that and matters. And I'm not saying that stereo is going anywhere, but for me, it is. For me, it's going out of the door. 
I mean, I agree with you. Atmos is, you know, highly emotive experience if it's done well. Mm. It, it's a wonderful way to listen to music, and it is the way that we experience music naturally. Mm. Well, almost. I'm, I, I don't know what the science is behind the speakers above your head. Your orchestra that you heard on Monday in Abbey Road Studio One, there was would have been a lot of sound reflecting. Shit, I forgot. Yeah, they were all like they, on a like tightrope and no, swinging around. No, they weren't. Were they like, were in a room <laughs> with knickers hanging from the ceiling. Atmos captures those knickers. And I knickers. can hear the knickers. Perf- yeah, you can hear the sound coming from above you, although not as much as you think because we're not that sensitive to sounds coming from above us. Mm. But it does, but just little things like with the meal stuff, being you know, able to take the drum kit and have the snare and the hi hats and the toms at uh, ear level and then just pan in the overheads. Up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ra- raising that. Just, I mean, there's that Stan Getz record, isn't there, with it? Who's the singer? Um, yeah, uh, there's, yeah, Astrid, there. Astrid Turf. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and that is pretty amazing. You can hear the difference in height between the snare and the hi hat. No, but it's it's not even that. It's when um, it's when the singer comes in. Yeah, and you so there's like this height difference between the guitar yeah. and the singer. And it's you can amazing. tell he's sitting down. She's standing yeah, up. Yeah, that that I mean that is really cool. That's incredible. That is really cool. Um, you know, and it's it's all about these bad boys as well isn't it yeah it's starting to to really work now Mm. on on those um and that's what it's all about and i've done a test with um but there's no substitute for good music no exactly it's got yeah it's got to be good music (laughs) otherwise there's no point um but i've done a test with family and friends who don't know anything about audio production or atmos or anything whatsoever and just and they've got iPhones or they've got Android devices, and the ones with iPhones, because I know how to use those, um, I've got them listening to some music on, generally they're on AirPods or on their AirPods Maxes or, or something like that, and then turn spatial audio off and said, right, now listen to the same thing. And they've all gone, oh, well, that doesn't sound as good. It's lost that sense of size and, yeah. hmm. and but it's, space. It's, but it's equally bringing out mixes... That I'm now realising are bad. Yeah, you know, hearing things spread out in a context. You know, you do things in stereo sometimes to compensate for the lack. Would you call it width? Mm-hmm. It, it, Just lack it, of space. You're yeah. trying to get everything. So, everything's so coming out of two to get speakers. Everything to sound good, and there was a particular. Um, record that I really loved when I was younger and it's just come out in Atmos and I listened back to it and it didn't sound very good. All mm. the elements were there. Yeah. The same elements from the mix were there but they just hadn't been able to take those stems and make it sound good because they'd obviously been compensating or not compensating but trying to get a certain sound in a stereo mix well, that's... which doesn't always work in Atmos unless you're working with organic instruments yeah i think well that's why i'm fighting against the whole stereo first principle because then you end up with stems Mm -hmm. that are shoehorned into two speakers yeah and i don't want that i don't want high pass filters on everything and uh, you know i don't want the 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 guitar eq'd out the way the piano eq'd out the way of the 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 whatever and then carved out so as the vocal can sit in i want that it's the only um instance of mixing stuff where soloing everything and getting it sounding as good as it possibly can soloed is actually the way yeah. to go mm-hmm. and then me. yeah <laughs> and and it works and you well you've heard it with the mill stuff when you yeah. and john came down on on and he i spoke to him on the phone this morning and he said it's the best sonic experience he's ever had in his life and he's been <laughs> in god knows how many studios mm. um Oops. it yeah it's just completely it, it's exciting. It's got it me exciting. excited about you know working in music productions and stuff like that. And you go back to stereo now, especially working in it, mm. and it's just like it feels restrictive. Su- this is such a compromise. Yeah. Well, Jonathan has said in the comments the first time I mixed in five point one, I was shocked by how much space there was. Haven't yeah. worked with Atmos yet, but based off of the surround experience, he agrees. Going back to stereo was a disappointment, which yeah. is kind of mirroring what we've found, isn't um, it? Every um, time um, you go back, you collapse it down. It's like. Nah, Look, I mean it works. So if you if you and yeah, so if someone wants a stereo mix, which obviously people do, and expect, I do a lot of jazz stuff, so a lot of that's still going on vinyl. Mm. Um, and collapsing the the, the Atmos mix down to two point <clears throat> didn't work a year ago, mm. uh, but now it does. Well, yeah, the technology is advancing. Yes, you have and... to you have to go in and you have to you know you still have to mm. tweak stuff, um, but it 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 does fold down. 
So there's a question here from Bandy Fanoski who says, why can't we hear Atmos on normal headphones? And you there can. has been a reply there saying you can, it's in binaural, yeah. which is true, um, but you need some kind of converter to put it into that format. Um, you, know, you need, you need a, some you kind need of playback device. You need a mobile phone. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you, can listen to, you can listen to your, you don't need AirPods, you can listen to hmm. spatial audio on your iPhone with a regular pair of headphones and turn spatial audio on and turn sound check on, which is on by default as it comes out the box. Mm. Um, and that's it. You're, well, you're, I mean, my favourite experience is actually sticking in my bare dynamic headphones into my Mac mm. yeah. and listening because yeah. they're great headphones and you get the whole oh, yes. sort of spatial audio Dolby Atmos experience mm. and it sounds amazing. Yeah. Mm. You know, the, the, the detail is incredible already on those headphones. Then, then what you get with that binaural decoding... Um, there, there's speaking a, of decoding, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, there's a what? Sorry, no, I was just going to say there was a comment here from Shan that says Atmos works if you sit in your living room in a stationary position, no, so d- dancing no, will have no, to keep no, to no, a minimum. See, the, the, no, this doesn't. is a myth that needs to be corrected. So one of the that's best experiences yeah. you can have in our room with a speaker system is listening to that stand gets record and walking over. And listening to what the drummer's doing and hearing less vocal and less bass. And then it's like walking around the room with the bloody musicians in it. Mm. So you do not need your head bolted to a rack in the middle of a room with six. Well, you do, but that's it. for other reasons. That's because I'm disabled and we won't, we won't go there. <laughs> Uh, um, and there's another question saying, are you saying the fold down from Atmos to stereo has changed in just a year? I'm curious what the difference between now and then is. Yes, it has changed it dramatically. Changes every week. Um, it changes a lot yeah. because they're constantly uh, updating the algorithms that are used to bring everything down into the few speaker format into stereo. But there's even a terminology thing there, isn't there? Folding it down in like into stereo. Hmm. Hmm. Y- are we talking about binaural? Are we talking about, you know, the... Um, DD plus JOC or whatever it's called, you know, there, there are so many different terms that we need to understand. Folding it down, yeah, you can um, fold um, a mix down into stereo, yeah, but that's different to what you're going to listen to that's when you're, to you're doing not listening a vinyl to. Or you're not listening yeah. to a stereo mix on your headphones if you're listening through Apple Music, Tidal, Amazon, mm-hmm. anything like that. Yeah, are you? No. So I, I think we need to really clarify that for some people. Um, what do you think? Um, it's well, in the two years since we started experimenting with it, when you so if we talk about the binaural mix first, so 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 the really really great thing about Atmos is that when you stream whatever on one of these or an Android equivalent or James's laptop, the Atmos mix is decoded in real time by this. Mm-hmm. So two years ago, it sounded like crap. Didn't mm-hmm. it? it was just crap now a year ago it sounded pretty good i fooled myself a few times when i had headphones on and took the headphones off i was surprised to hear that no i was actually listening to the headphones it wasn't the speakers it got better now it's Mm. a measurable amount better than that again and as long as you do the, the you know you get your and this is why you need to know what you're doing when you're mixing it um, and this is why there's 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 a need for um, a dedicated mastering service now. So there's a lot of people. So so because that because it's so it's basically codec based. So it's it's decoded on your device, and that's what makes it different to any previous surround format. I mean, some were, but you still needed speakers. If you didn't have a center channel, then you'd lose anything panned there. But Atmos is a completely different beast. It's it's an object based thing. Um, and there's a lot of people working really hard to 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 improve this all the time and, and mm. make it better and better and better. And it is. And and what's happening now is as more of us are getting into it, we're putting pressure on companies like Apple to change the way they're doing things. So there's a big push at the moment for Apple to adopt the basically the Dolby codec yeah. for the binaural yeah. because it's, it's that, just it is better. better. Is that the AC four? Yeah. Yeah. It's just better. Um, and they do their own, so they use the DD plus jock, which is Dolby Digital plus joint object something or other, um, to, to to create Apple's spatial audio. And most engineers are going, you shouldn't really be doing that. Just use the because then we've because at the moment you're having to slightly compromise and find a middle ground mm. between Amazon and Tidal 
um, a Netflix and Apple Music because they do sound different. But I, but I'm not. I'm going down the mm. I'm going down the 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 AC4 IMS route, which is the Dolby one because Apple doesn't sound as good. Sure. Um, so I'm not compromising a mix for a format that doesn't, and that's why it's so difficult at the moment. So it doesn't sound as good at the moment. But in a year's time, it might sound better than the Dolby mm. one. So, you know, we, we, we don't know. It's just improving all the time. So there's, there's a few comments here which we should address. So Shan has said, if I walk to the kitchen, all I'm going to hear is drums. Technically not. I don't think that's entirely true. I mean, so, yes, you'll hear more of whatever is towards the speaker that you're heading towards. But you know, it's not going to completely eradicate every other element of the mix. And also, technically, that would kind of happen with stereo. If you move more towards the right speaker, you're going to hear more of what yeah, pans right. exactly. And it depends what you're listening on. So if you're mixing, you need to be in the sweet spot mm. in there. If you're listening at home on a consumer device, the consumer devices are getting damn clever. Mm. And for less than £200, yeah. there are devices out there that know where you are in the room and how reflective your surfaces are, and calibrate themselves mm. accordingly. That's how good it's getting. So if you walk into the kitchen, in you know, saying 10 years from now, the tiny little thing, probably the size of that, that you're listening on, will know that you've walked into the kitchen, and it will compensate. And if there are other people in the room, it will compensate for that. Um, and And so that's why... I think this is the future of music, and it's because that, because of that technology, and because of how it's moving so rapidly, and how it's improving mm-hmm. all the time. It, it 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 really is. And like you said, that's you know stereo. It's the same. If you walk mm. from one speaker to the other speaker, you're going to hear. You know, if you're listening to early stereo um, records where it was drums in the left and bass in the right. Walk to the left speaker, go over that side of the room, you're only going to hear drums. Well, we're also in a very small minority in terms of how we listen to music. The vast majority of consumers are just going to listen to music and not even know that yeah, sure. we, we've moved yeah, they from don't know what stereo to Atmos. Yeah, so exactly. They're not even yeah. going to worry that they're going to walk out of the room into the kitchen yeah. and, and be like, oh, but I can't hear the drums as clearly <laughs> as I can. <laughs> you know. It's... And the thing is, you don't have to listen to music in Atmos. If you're really that opposed to it in your own home listening environment, just disable it. Just yeah. listen to it in stereo. It's totally valid to still do that. Yeah. And at that's point... why we have the stereo down mixes yeah. and stuff like that. You can fold down the Atmos mix in stereo. Exactly. Yeah. And there are lots of people that still love listening to music on vinyl and that's a whole experience mm. and I appreciate that and that's why I'm still doing stereo mastering at the so, moment. So that doesn't change um, our workflow, does it? <clears throat> because no. we mix in Atmos, mm. but we've still also got a stereo mix. It gets folded down to stereo. That can then be mastered and tweaked yep. to mm. make the stereo sound as good as it was if you just did the stereo mix. But in most cases, what I'm finding is the stereo fold. So the fold down from... So we've got a 914 system. The fold down from 914, which is... 16 speakers, 15, 14. 14 speakers. When that goes down to two speakers, it's better now mm. than the stereo mix I can do if I'm just doing a stereo mix. Yeah, with, it translates with very well. So I've got some stuff to mix for you this week, and I'm absolutely going to do the Atmos mix first. <coughs> we're mixing it together. No, we're not. <laughs> and, I, and, and the reason for that is is because the, the what comes out of what gets spat out of stereo mm. is going to be better and have more separation and just be better than if I was just sitting there doing a stereo plus, mix. Plus you've got consistency yeah. as well. So you're going to have consistency between the stereo yep. and the Atmos mix, whereas before our thinking was, okay, so we've got the stereo stems, and then we're going to put mm. that into an Atmos project and do an Atmos mix with that to get the consistency. But now we're going the other it's way. Going yeah, the other we're way. going right. Yeah. We start with Atmos because that's more fun. It's more emotive. It, it's, yeah. it's just more better. Yeah, <laughs> so, up, up until now, the Atmos has been the compromise. Yeah. Now it's starting to switch over. The stereo is becoming the compromise. So Herfinner has said, I'm sure two years ago, you said that the great thing about Atmos is that it will also sound great in stereo or even mono. So why is it necessary to still make a separate stereo mix? Now, this is for things like Spotify, who don't have Boo, Spotify. Atmos <laughs> capability. It's purely a yeah, stereo but that- file. But you can use the, the binaural render, I, well... No, no, you don't want to use the binaural render. You want to use the two-point fold-down. 
and that's what's cha- that's what's changing now. So mm. a year ago, six months ago, you did need a dedicated stereo mix. Yes. Now you don't. You need the two point mix, so but you, you can still need. you can still master the track in stereo yeah. at the end point. So you can yeah. then get that up in your DAW, whatever you're using to master two speakers. Yeah, that's it. So you, so you, it's you know it's still quality control. Yeah, and that's what's going to go on, on vinyl both. and CD yeah. and Spotify, yeah. um, and 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 all that stuff. And and if you are a consumer that's listening in Atmos, you can you will still there will be times where you will probably listen in stereo for whatever reason like say vinyl or i don't know if you, you decide oh, i want to turn atmos off for some reason maybe mm. it's eating well, too, a lot much, of... too much data when you're you know traveling yeah well there's a lot of something. stereo mixes that aren't in atmos so you yeah. and so your device will automatically switch <clears throat> yeah. between them and most people don't know um and 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 don't care but of the, the of the five people that i hand selected that i knew didn't know or care Today, when I switched that off, they all went, oh, well, that's nowhere near as good. Hmm. When you went to the stereo mix from the Atmos mix, it was like, it, and just on headphones or AirPods or not, you know, not in the studio, in speakers, just in a very consumer, consumer place on consumer equipment, they all went, no, it's nowhere near as good. The stereo is nowhere near as good as whatever. What's that other thing you showed me? And, um, and that's on by default now, so... Is it um, called Christmas? Atmos. Chris, Dolby Christmas. Christmas? That's the, that's the, that's, I'm that's having the an one. idea for a Christmas album. Uh-oh. Shall we do a oh, God. Dolby Christmas? Yeah. So that's Atmos mix. So, I'm, so as far as mixing is concerned, I'm only doing Atmos mixing now. Stereo mixing is in the ground as far as I'm concerned. Goodbye, good riddance. Um, as far as Atmos mastering goes, so they're two completely different services. So, so I can now master in Atmos... And the Atmos mastering service is going to be basically the same as the stereo mastering service was. So in stereo, if you send me a stereo mix, I've got no control over the level of the 14th Cabasa part um, other than with EQ. Um, I can turn the bass down globally on the whole mix, but I can't turn the bass down as an instrument. Well, you kind of can these days, but it's still a bit weird. Um, like If your triangles pan to the left and you decide when it's mastered you want it panned to the right, there's absolutely nothing I can do about that because I've got a stereo mix and all I can do is global processing on that stereo mix. Atmos mastering is going to be exactly the same. So if someone has mixed an Atmos record very well in at least a 714 equipped studio who knows what they're doing, they can send me the ADM file and then say it's for an album and there's nine tracks I can then drop all of those nine tracks into a project and I have no control over individual instrument level I have no control over positional data for objects but I do have control over global EQ level limiting compression so I can balance those tracks and do what a mastering engineer should do balance the tracks um, get the best out of the mixes compile them into an album and then present them in the best way for each individual streaming service and at the moment that's probably going to be different versions one mm. version for apple one version for 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 amazon um and then just a fold down for spotify they can get fuck themselves i don't care um so so that that'll be a um so that's the difference between that's, that's the spirit <laughs> that's the difference between mastering and mixing so so what so if some so if you've mixed um say Johnny's mixed an Atmos, his, his own production in Atmos at home on headphones, um, and it's terrible, and the, the, the stu- there's kick drums in the ceiling, that's not a mastering job. That's a, that's a mixing Fix it job. In the you mix. need to go yeah. back to the mix yeah. and, and correct stuff like that. A exactly, of there's some good there comments. That, um, I th- Shan's one um, it says he thinks he needs to go and listen to a very good mix, and then maybe his opinion will change, but for now I'm not a believer in Atmos. That's fine. And, and that doesn't matter. That's yeah, exactly I've, what I was I'm say. completely the other way. But it doesn't matter because you can still listen in stereo. Yeah, you can still and listen can in stereo. Yeah, stereo time. hasn't yeah. stopped enjoy. existing. Yeah, stereo's can... not going. Yeah, yeah, we, we are talking about something that is, in the grand scheme of things, it's just like two different ways to listen to the music sure. you like. And yeah. that's it. Sure. Yeah. You know, we're just excited because it's fun. Well, there's, there's yeah, a very yeah, good question from Major Brass who said, do you think a flashy Atmos mix could hide a bad mix? No, and I would say the no, answer is absolutely no. not. You'd hear everything. And you it, won't hear hide a, everything. it won't hide a bad recording. So Yeah, I've, there's so, no masking. So yeah, most of the bad Atmos mixes can be traced back to a bad recording. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I have heard some terrible Atmos mixes. There's so if you do a crap there. mix, 
you will know about it. And you this know, is, nothing it, can hide. And if you get a good mix, likewise, it really stands out. So you have to make sure that you're still producing to the highest possible quality because if anything, you have less places to hide in Atmos. Yeah, and this is why it needs a mastering service because how many tracks have we listened to on Apple Music and soloed the oh, high yes. channels to hear what's coming out the ceiling? And in a lot of cases, on some really yeah, massive just, number one hit records, you just hear loads of wobbling. <laughs> and- have, you, have you done that at different times, though, to see whether it's to do with um, the streaming service rather than... Yeah, it's, so it's, 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 it's part identical of the render. every time. Um, so it's part, so of the it's part of the... It's part of the so this is, this is... And this is why Apple kind of did us a favour when they said that you've got to have an Atmos mix to be on a playlist and they're now going to pay artists 10% extra Mm, in royalties if they've got an Atmos mix. On one hand, that's good. On the other hand, that's bad because loads of labels that can't afford to have an Atmos Mm. mix made are just getting Bob to do it in the office on headphones using Logic and the built-in renderer and it's spitting out a load of shit. Mm. And, 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 and And there's no quality control there because there's not enough people mastering in Atmos. Mixed by Dot Rob has also asked a very good question. Um, good could question. you actually purchase and own Atmos Music as yes. a file or something or is this subscription renting streaming of licenses only? So I would depend on Apple. Will there be binaural? <laughs> I don't know if there'll be binaural or vinyl. That's, you can, that's a yeah, you can have well the original binaural recording from the from the 70s was on yes. vinyl. So yes, you can have you can put binaural a binaural mix on vinyl. vinyl. It's just yeah, binaural. No, I'm just I'm just is, getting used to saying it. That's all. Used, to, just... used to say it, but you could yeah. You, so you can purchase and download um, the music certainly on Apple Music, I think. And you can also a lot of people are releasing Blu-rays with with Atmos and mm. Five Point One and 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 mm. various other formats as well. Mm. So yeah, you can you can purchase and own it forever. Yeah. Cool. There's a there's a thought. You can listen to music when you haven't got any internet. Outrageous. Amazing. I'm going to have a Blu-ray party instead of a vinyl party <laughs> soon. We'll That's put, just posh. We'll put Atmos Blu-rays on. I, bet, I wonder who Blu-ray was. He must have, it's just Ray, Shell, any, Ray Shell's got, It's Ray Shell's. He got really cold one day. <laughs> Blu-ray. And said, I'm going to invent an optical playback system like DVD, but better. What was the other one? Ever Blu-ray Blu-ray, and then, what was not. the other one? It, was, it had a more... The, the name actually made more sense didn't it? Um, mm. There were the two, because I, I was working in a music shop at the time, we were selling both. It was right. Blu-ray, right. it was... There was Super Audio CD, SACD, is that the one you're thinking of? No, no, I'm talking about Blu-ray as in watching films. Like DVD kind of oh, thing. Right. Like DVD. So it was Blu-ray and <laughs> DVD, so, someone will know. It? No, it wasn't DVD, it was like high definition something or other. Huh. Okay. I vaguely remember, but there were yeah, two, there were two that would be. Um, and I remember there would always be people, should I get this one, should I get that one? I was like, get the HD one. <laughs> <laughs> how long I was so for the people that cannot afford a full 714 916 whatever speaker system yeah, which is understandable you know there's a lot of money can you mix on headphones yes. is that now possible yes okay um, and Should it you... always yes with the provision six of months, mastering six months ago the answer to that was no but now if you've got so the so the other problem with home producers and, and people in project studios and people like us if we weren't getting into Atmos with speakers and stuff, um, is that you have to update your operating system, otherwise the algorithms don't improve. Sure. So if you're running a Mac and you're running Logic, you have to update your operating system, you have to update Logic, otherwise you don't get the improvements. And the problem with that could then be that half your plugins don't work. So there's that I mean we were running I think until two years ago. We were running a Mac and an operating system. We were running Mac 10.12, which was ancient. Yeah, Yeah. because anything else broke everything. Yeah, so you had to go back to the backup and and, oh, now you know now everything. Now we literally jumped files for a CD. Yeah, we jumped from that right up to the current one, OS 14. Yeah, which is a humongous jump. That's how old it was. And whole DAWs didn't work. Yeah. Anymore, and I was having to and wave to, burner. Yeah, and all that. <laughs> yeah, it was just ridiculous. Uh, so you have to do that. So you have to bear that in mind um, when you when you do get into it. But um, what I it, what I would advise is when you're starting out on headphones, you have to you still have to use your imagination a bit, and and you we're not that sensitive to the height channels, hmm. um, particularly in headphones. But we're not that sensitive to the height channels on speakers. It's amazing how yeah. many times you solo the speakers, which are two meters above our heads, and it's like, oh, they're on. Oh yeah, it's coming from up there. Yeah, and it, there have been a number of times when we first got them set up last week. I was like, are they on? Is there? A, yeah, is it loud we enough? We are What's... so 
unsensitive to sounds coming from above, and this has really kind of shown it. So you have yes. to be kind of careful what you do. Is that why seagulls um, always manage to get your chips? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's why. exactly, exactly why, bastards. Um, and there's lots of things that you shouldn't do because you just end up with a mush. So lots of people are using like a 7.1 reverb and just turning it up, and that's kind of the the, the Atmos. And you can, I'm, I'm not using any surround reverbs. I'm only using stereo reverbs, and I'm using different ones for different instruments and then putting them in different places, mm. more often than not with the instrument. Um, so for Emil stuff, we had some ambience on the drums, which I put up slightly higher um, and then turned the pre-delay off so as it kind of blended in with the drum sounds and that had the effect of actually pushing it past the front wall where the speakers are. It sounded further away. And then on, on the piano, I would turn the pre-delay up and then pan the reverb on the piano behind and then it sounds like the piano's there and then you mm. hear the room and it gives the impression of the piano being in front of the drums and I did the same with the bass. So there's lots of positional stuff you can do with that that, that you can really get to work on speakers but is a bit more difficult on headphones mm -hmm. um, I, I would say that me and you in particular we tend to gravitate towards music that's organic real mm -hmm. musicians you like a lot of dance music mm -hmm. and there's the pump isn't there you know mid-side yes stuff, that, that was a question thing. that was asked about uh, that is that possible uh, yeah I'm, I'm sure it's possible in atmos it's just, you're just gonna be doing it's just gonna be a different workflow it's yeah. gonna be a different way to get that pump mm -hmm. yeah you, know? you can still do, you can still slam stuff yeah if you want to me, that's not the the the, the that's, that's the not other, the idea. No, the other benefit to Atmos is the enormous dynamic range it affords you. Yeah, separation um, dynamic range is that's that's what I yeah. love about it. And another thing I've noticed, really, only this week is that when I've listened to on my phone, I've listened to some Atmos mixes and some stereo mixes and mm. compared the two. What's starting to happen now is I'm getting the spatial audio mixes a lot louder or it's feeling like it's a lot louder than the stereo mix. And that's either because Apple's turning the stereo mixes down over time or just because they're crushed to fuck and all the dynamic range is gone, they just sound tiny, which is what happens when you crush a stereo mix. Well, don't, just... don't, don't the streaming services at the end of the day have a veto over how loud or quiet yeah, and it's... what you upload is? There's obviously a threshold that you are required to meet, especially, I mean, you're an Apple certified mastering engineer mm. aren't you so you know um what you what, what, what you, have, you to have to do in do. order yeah. to upload that stuff um but i i would i would think that uh, that they could literally just go like that right all stereo stuff is that's what they're starting to do and, and all it's, atmos it's, stuff is yeah it's become real and i've really noticed it this week there's a lot of atmos mixes that are a, a lot louder and noticeably more dynamic just on headphones yeah than the stereo mix and mm -hmm. that's why when we were coming up with pricing and we were working out what we we're going to do with the website this week, it was I was just like, I'm just not going to do stereo any stereo mixing anymore. I'm just not going to do it. It's as simple as that because this is so much better now. Mm. Um, so in terms of people, there are some really good questions coming in. So thank you all for sending in yeah, questions. You. Uh, so Shan has commented again saying, which door has the best Atmos setup, or are they all the same? So your this front can, door. Yeah, your front door. Uh, so your mileage may vary hugely depending on your own workflow. We've tried a lot of DAWs over the last few weeks, haven't we? Um, we've yeah. tried Pro Tools, which is technically the industry standard, but is an absolute pig to learn. <clears throat> if if you haven't That's used Pro awful. Tools before, you will lose your mind. <laughs> now, I'm pretty awful. good with computers, but I was losing my shit next door trying to <coughs> get that working. However, if you spend the time learning it, Pro Tools is the industry standard, so it must be good. Uh, Logic... No, probably not. Uh, Logic pretty is pretty good for learning the workflow and getting it all working if you can get things to import and export properly. We've yeah, had a couple it's... of problems with that and a, a few more people I've been talking to as well have also seen the same issue, so it's not just our cursed tech. No, with the latest it's... update, it is better. Yeah. Um, still, sometimes you export an ADM file and then you re-import the ADM mm. file and everything comes out the center speaker. Fantastic. Which just is what you, want. you end up with mono. Um, which is, you've is also great. got Studio One, which is a fantastic DAW for that's, Atmos. That's the winner. Um, for us, it's probably winner, winner, floppy dinner. because there's, there's two reasons why Studio One is the clear winner. Yes. One is because you can monitor in 914, up to 914, without having to use the standalone Dolby Atmos renderer, which is another $299. On top, and then you've got to link the two using Dolby Audio Bridge, which can be an absolute arsehake, as you found out. Yes, I spent and, six hours trying to get time codes between yeah, Pro Tools so and Logic the renderer. So Logic won't didn't really work. connect to the external renderer at all. 
Um, no, there is no functionality for no. that. And um, even using Dolby Audio Bridge, it just doesn't, no, it doesn't work. work. We couldn't get Pro Tools to work either, despite you spending six hours That's on video That's what I just said. I spent with... ages trying to get it work. Yeah, it's... that doesn't work. Well, the audio does, but the time code doesn't, which is key for metering in the renderer software. Yeah. Studio One uh, just worked straight away mm. using the internal renderer, so the, the version of the Dolby renderer that comes with it, which is the best out of any of the DAWs mm. we've tried. And there's two key selling points for Studio One. One is the 914. If you've got a 914 system, you can just use it and it works and sounds great. The second thing with Studio One is that you can run a binaural headphone mix. This is at least using the Audient Aurea mm. because you've got two extra channels for the second headphone output. Sure, You can concurrently run a binaural headphone mix whilst you have the speaker mix going. So on all other DAWs or on the standalone Dolby Atmos renderer itself, you have to switch between them and or you have to do I a I have been told yeah. there is a way to do it in Pro Tools. You have to do it's a possible. re-render. Yeah, but just turning the volume of all the channels down in Pro Tools is a there, massive There are update. some things so that we God really hate about Pro Tools. Take to, take to do that. Um, so that means to check the binaural mix on studio one all you need to do is put the headphones on and mute the speakers so there are quite a few people asking if we've tried cubase because apparently studio one is a poor man's ripoff of cubase now we've heard good things about cubase we've never personally (laughs) used it um but we know it's a super popular daw um obviously heard good things about it but you know heard good things about pro tools and then nearly lost my mind trying to get it working yeah it's 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 about workflow it's how you Um, work your workflow what kit you have as well might be kind of instrumental in that. You know, if you've got an Avid MTRX system, you might be best off with Pro Tools because that all talks to each other and it's all yeah, hunky-dory. Exactly. Yeah. Whereas if you've got maybe an Aurea or something like that, you might be better in Studio One or, you know, it can heavily depend on each person's situation and the DAW you're, DAW you're used to. Um, although Major Brass said, I use Ableton and there is no Atmos anywhere. So if you use Ableton, you are you're not, not atmos the moment and what the world needs is instead of universal audio coming out with is love stuff sweet like, love yeah that oh, instead right. of luna and oh another daw just what we bloody need mm. it needs someone to come out with a dedicated atmos only daw that's entirely based on atmos and multi-channel workflow mm. and not stereo buses and here's how you slam your mix bus and all that kind of rubbish um that's a, a we need a dedicated Atmos DAW, I think, instead of people trying to come out with something that replicates a Harrison console from 1978 or or whatever, it's like just get over it, you know. Yeah, yeah. taking my my place. I have get the hammer yes. out in a minute. Uh, yes, right. Rant over. I think so. Uh, well, it's not uh, a rant so, really; no, it's excitement. Right, about, let me talk. Uh, uh, so, uh, Bandy Fanoski <laughs> said. Every time I try and talk, I think of something and then Mark ends up talking for so long that I forget what I'm going to say and it's, it's a nightmare. You, you need to train your memory. Yeah, I can't you do that. You need to get like, some elastic bands. Ping. Yes. Uh, Bandy Fanoski said, your enthusiasm on Atmos is infectious. So, Good. Thank you very much. Is that all uh, of our yeah, enthusiasm or just his? Get your headphones out. Get uh, into I it. I've lost the comment. Absolutely yes, get into it. It... it, it grew on us over time didn't it straight away it was like as soon as we we tried it for ourselves it was like right this is different but a good different and it seems like such a logical way to do things like you it, it's easier to mix despite having more channels what yeah it sounds I'm, like I'm it's just easier try, <laughs> i'm just trying really hard not to talk yeah you're doing a great job thanks it's really distracting Sorry, right. I just interrupted just not, you. Yeah. but yeah it's, it's easier to easier to mix there's less contention between like objects in the left and right field because you've spread everything out you got more dynamic range you know and the option will be there fairly soon to be able to do it on headphones if it isn't there already and it's kind of going in that direction so you know it is becoming more and more accessible and you know we all all of us here think it's the way forward well i was the i remember i was the most skeptical person in the world yeah, it's like, like oh what, it's just another quadraphonic it's, it, well i've seen so many surround formats come and go yeah um, it's like I'm oh, not another one. Yeah. Why can't we just keep this in the cinema? Um, and I was ignorant. I mm. was I was a fat grumpy mastering engineer, and I was totally ignorant of how it worked. And it wasn't until I delved into how it actually works, not just from our point of view, but from a consumer point of view, and looked into it, and then tried it. It was like, okay, mm. this shows the early signs of being quite incredible. Mm. Now, now we've 
we've we've been because it's been a two year journey. It's not something we've just switched on overnight. It's been a two year journey. Um, sure. And now it's yeah, I'm just not going back to stereo because it's rubbish. It really, really is. It's not how our ears work at all. And and Dolby Atmos is entirely appropriate for music. It is. No matter what anyone says. <laughs> I mean, okay. What? Well, it's just that stereo is appropriate for some. Music. Yes, it is. But I'm saying it's not as good. In 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 almost every instance I can think of, it's not as good. And it wouldn't have been as good if it was around 40 years ago when you're listening to classic material. Mm. Imagine Steely Dan in Atmos. It would blow. Not 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 remixed now, but intentionally recorded for it. Yeah, I th- in the seventies, that would I th- blow I think, your mind. I think if they're going to do steely, do the steely down stuff, they're going to have to go right back to, yeah. you yeah. know, just mix it again. Yeah, basically, instead of using stems, mm. uh, I don't know if that's possible. Yeah, well, in a lot of cases, a lot of yeah, they've lost the tapes or whatever. Tapes were expensive. A lot of them were reused. Mm. Um, there was a big fire as well, wasn't there, at Universal around two thousand and ten yes. or something? Lost a lot of masters and stuff like mm. that. Yeah, there's a guy I can't remember his name. He remixed Tubular Bells for Atmos. Um, mm. Half the multi tracks were missing. There was whole like sections of song missing wow. really? from the multi tracks, wow. and he had to go and try and separate them from the original stereo masters, and then had to keep the to because in order to for your device to switch between the stereo mix and the Atmos mix, depending on what you're listening on, they have to be exactly the same length to like the sample. Yes, mm. um, but tape changes speed mm. when you play it, and he couldn't. And uh, one of the longest parts of the process was getting. The two versions to, to line up. Um, yeah, it's just loads of technical challenges like that. You know, you know what's really great about the Atmos debate? If you, you're like, oh, it's just a new f- format that's going to die. Great, you can think that. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Bye. You can carry on <laughs> exactly. listening yeah. stereo. Yeah, stereo yeah. is not being eradicated. Yeah, it's not, so, yeah, not going to become illegal to so do a stereo it's, mix. It's not even an argument worth having, is it? No, right? exa- no exactly. So, it's just, uh, yeah, just get on with mm. it. So if we could apply that to politics and... <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yes, all politics must now be in a surround, immersive well, format. Actually, surround format. <laughs> Thinking, because there's a topic that's been really big in kind of general news and, and all that kind of stuff recently. Oh, what's he going to say? I'm uh-huh. No, artificial intelligence. Do we think that there could be some kind of AI thing that could do the mix for you? Do like a stereo, mi- uh, uh, an Atmos mix and put the objects all over yeah, the place. Do we sure. think it will absolutely ruin it and do a really crap job? Or do you reckon at some point there will be a tool out there that can do a majority well, they're, they're of the work for you? They're saying that within three to five years, most soaps will be AI. Soaps? Yeah. Like oh, I thought you meant like dry. bathroom soap. Oh, I was like, like what? what? No, like soap dry. <laughs> oh, I'm so clean with this robotic <laughs> <Yes>. juice. <laughs> Just let me get my EastEnders. <laughs> <laughs> Something comes out the speaker on your phone and cleans you. That'd be great. But, but That's AI, mad. AI will be able to mix music. Yeah. The issue, yeah. The, not the issue, but the, the whole point is that the human is listening to it. It's whether the human mm. the human makes the decision whether yeah, I mean, I, uh, you like it or not, and that's it. Yeah. Mm. I, mean, I can already not paint you, but it can generate you a picture, can't it? But there's no, is there any emotion in it? Mm. It's, see, I, I think it's a bit of a dumb idea, but I, I'm just saying in the future, I think there, there might be a load of tools, like the equivalent of Lander. You send it to Lander, it does your mastering for you. The equivalent yeah, of... Yeah, I'm sure there will be. Yeah. S- the spinny boy Lander... You send it to spinnyboylander.com and then you get your Atmos mix back. I reckon that'll appear and or, there'll be a whole load of like automatically yeah, of generated be. Atmos mixes. Yeah, all all, I, all I am hoping is that you have shuffled off this mortal coil before they can upload consciousness. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Although sure they'll probably dick you up and find a way to do it anyway. <laughs> and then we'll have Mark AI mastering. Oh, God. Probably. We'll just have your head in a jar. Of complete with, out. Complete with <laughs> swearing and everything. We'll just take the curtain up and uh, go on, Mark. Go on, do, you, do you think? <laughs> right. Uh, <bruh>. Yes. <laughs> on that. <laughs> on that note. A couple of questions. Another one from Shan. Are there speaker companies that specialise in speaker setups that are affordable to the consumer? Yes. The IK Multimedia iLoud iLoud thing yep. is one, and that will calibrate itself to your room as well. Um, and what a lot of people are doing, and it's a really valid approach, is they've got nice, expensive main monitors for stereo that they love. Mm. So they're doing the majority of the mixing on that. And then when it comes to panning stuff around the room or deciding where they want things positionally, they're using a much cheaper system because they already know that their 
But, and this is an argument for, for, for soloing stuff when you're doing Atmos sure. mix and getting it to sound really good because for the first time in history, it now works because you haven't got to try and do that with all these different frequency bands. You can just move them a bit. And it only needs to, to you, you can literally pan a mandolin 5% and it's out the way of the acoustic guitar. You don't have to EQ either of them. It's brilliant. Um, so that's a really valid approach to use, you know, to, to, to get your, your individual channel sounding good on your stereo speakers that you know and you love and then using a cheaper system to pan it around hmm. the roomsy using your car door speakers using your car surrounds. door speakers but at the moment the gold standard is still speakers because sure. it's the only known kind of it's thing constant. that's not yeah there's not changing whereas the headphone mix is changing all the time hmm. speakers were the gold standard mixing in stereo yeah exactly yeah hmm. okay. yeah lots of mastering engineers I know that are very successful and only use headphones um, but it's what, again, it's what you're used to. Um, yeah. Well, there's knowing a, the compromises as well. There was an interesting comment from Benj about 15 minutes ago saying he thinks that VSX, who do like room emulation kind of thing for stereo headphones, he's under the impression that at some point they might release a an Atmos version of that. So I'd be really interested to see how that works. It yeah. would be like a binaural rendition that kind of colours every angle in a weird way i'd be really interested to see how that works and if it's even going to exist well i was just going to say i think we've reached the end of our atmosy discussion yes i mean we've already been going for an hour and 20 minutes so So let's wrap it up let's wrap it up wrap it up in beautiful little kittens yeah yes so thank you everybody for watchy watchy as what what we forgot is stereo dead no to me well to mark yes yes I, I think stereo is still a perfectly viable way to work in for most people. Yeah. And it's it's a way that it will be consumed, you know, on radio and all that kind of stuff for ages, possibly forever. I don't know. But it's interesting to see how quickly Atmos is becoming a thing. It's St- it's growing. Stereo is familiar. Yes. And that's really its only argument as far as I'm concerned mm. now. Um, and I would much rather stream <clears throat> a really good Atmos mix in that room than put a record on, on any system I've ever heard. Mm. Um, I get much more emotionally involved with the Atmos mix than I ever have from putting a vinyl record on. And I like, you know, I'm a vinyl fan. I love it. I master for it all the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been listening to vinyl all my life. So, um, but yeah, they're gonna there we gather, go. gather dust rather quickly. Um, one final question. Can you do an episode, or this should probably be a video, on what we think is a, is a good working man's starter setup for Atmos, like a budget kit for Atmos? Yeah, we can totally do that. Um, once we have a bit of time to put some content together, we can look at all kinds of things to kind of help the lower budget end of the market um, find yeah. out what the best system is. But at the moment, the best system and the most simplest system, and in most cases the free system, is a DAW that's got the renderer built in. Um, and so headphones. that's most of them, um, apart from Ableton. Um, I yeah. don't know if Reaper has. I think Reaper does sure. now. I think. Uh, and the headphones you've already got. Hmm. And get started. Get started with that. It's free and it's the simplest in terms of setup because, like I said earlier, build, designing and building speakers was mm. easier than it was getting all the software talking to everything oh, yes. else. And it, yeah, that's been a real mountain to climb. Um, but we're there now. We are there. Cool. So thank you very much uh, for watching. I hope you enjoyed the live stream. And if you have any suggestions for something else you'd like to see on a live stream, then you're more than welcome to drop us a message in our Discord, which is presentdayproduction.com slash Discord. Uh, thank you for watching, and you will see us next week. Yeah. You're looking very expectantly. And shall I tell you to wave? Wave. Goodbye. See you next week. Bye. Bye. Where am I looking? Everywhere. Everywhere.